seated. You may be seated and turn in your Bibles to uh, Proverbs chapter 8. Also, kids, you're dismissed to our kids' time in the back. Thank you, ladies. Thank you for band. Uh, we miss Jennifer. She's out skiing, and she'll be back, but uh, we're grateful, especially Julie. She's just the prettiest one up here. I see I said something wrong earlier, so I needed to come back with that, right? Um, um, yeah, I'm in the doghouse always. Just keep your, your card, your prayer request, and we'll make sure that um, in a few minutes I'm going to ask you to bring those to the front. I'll also ask you to bring those pins and, and put them here at the side as well. The loudest voices are often the ones that we listen to the most. But they're not always the best voices, if you will. The loudest voices may be those who are telling us to do something wrong. Or giving us bad advice. Have you ever noticed that sometimes the greatest wisdom is what we have to get the quietest to hear? The greatest wisdom, the sharpest insight, or even the most intelligent reasoning may be the soft or the low voice that can only be heard when you get still, you get quiet, and you lean in to listen. Uh, we've all experienced that, I'm sure. In, in fact, I've shared with you this verse from our, uh, our, our new theme for 2024 is connect. Connect to God, connect to each other, and then connect to a lost and dying world. And this is the theme verse that I want us to use. It's Psalms 4610. Be still and know that I'm God. Have you all said that or heard that before, yes or no? Hey, will you just read it with me? Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. Be still. You see, when you get still and you spend time with God, some things change. In fact, we begin to hear Him. Sometimes you may hear the voice of God and you think it's the loudest voice in all the world. But you know what? Oftentimes, the voice of God comes when you and I get quiet. Sometimes I need to change my position or my place just so I can hear what's going on around me. You understand? Uh, you, you've seen this meme before or this quote before. Um, I, when I married a husband, I didn't realize that the ears came separate. <laughs> Any, anybody heard that before? My wife has said it because um, <laughs> the other day she said something like this. She said, are you even listening to me? I thought that was a weird way to start a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't tell good jokes either, by the way, y'all know that. I'll remember that you said it. Get still and hear God, because God just may radically change your thinking, or your pain, or your heart, or your family, if you'll begin to listen. Because I think there are some people whose testimony is something like this. When I was younger or when I came to know Jesus, I'd get alone with my Bible or I'd be listening to music and God would just speak, speak, speak. But it seems like over these years, he's become silent. Maybe that's your testimony. Let me just be really honest with you today. It's not God who got silent. It's, a God, it's, it's you and I who stopped listening. Because you see, God is always speaking. Do you believe that? Say amen. He's always speaking. I love Hebrews chapter 1 that said in the past he spoke through various prophets and in various ways, but now he speaks through his son. It is the Holy Spirit that lives inside of us who is constantly teaching us, wanting to guide us into faith. But the world is so loud. We want everything so loud. Turn it up, right? Just so I can hear. <laughs> we want everything right now, but sometimes it's get still, be quiet, hold on, and listen to what God has to say. And it's that still, small Beautiful voice, oftentimes difficult to hear because it's not something you want to hear. But when God shows up, things happen. Today I want to talk to you about wisdom, wisdom crying out. That's where we find wisdom. The greatest wisdom of all is not found in some of those philosophers like Aristotle or Karl Marx or in geniuses of industry like Alexander Graham Bell or Henry Ford or not even the Incredibles like Steve Jobs or Stephen Hawking or Tesla or Einstein or, hold on, Elon Musk. Got to say his name, right? 
Literally, it's the wonder and the wow that comes from the wisdom given to us by the creator of the universe who says, I love you and I want to show you an abundant like you've never seen life. His grace is for us, folks. His life given for us. It is in Proverbs that we find often these, these nuggets or this, these pieces of wisdom that will radically Teach us how to live with others, how to respond to others, how, how, how to plan our future. In fact, here is the core verse, I believe, in the book of Proverbs and also for our series this month. It's Proverbs chapter 1, verse number 7. It says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning. The fear of the Lord is the foundation, the beginning, whatever, uh, of true knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and knowledge or wisdom and discipline. Well, what is it to fear God? One of the things that Julie said this morning um, that we prayed about last night is how we're led to worship because sometimes we need to be led. Sometimes we don't know how to worship. You know, just turning on the radio and singing to a song is not a way to worship. That's one way to worship, but that's not the worship or everything about worship. Worship is everything we are. In fact, there's some examples in your life. Have you noticed this? Of people who walk with Jesus, and we need to learn from them. There's some people that you know that they're always quoting Scripture, and you might even get tired of it sometimes, but here's the deal. That's an example for us of how we need to live our life because Scripture ought to be guiding us on a daily basis. Whatever you're listening to is going to either guide your life or warp your life. Whoever you're spending time with is either going to draw you to be closer to Jesus or further away from Him, push you further away from Him. So answer the question, what wisdom are, are we listening to? Who are we leaning in for? Lean in. I encourage you today. Lean in. What what are you hearing? Wisdom calls out. She is calling. That's what I'm about to read to you. She is calling from the streets. Just around the corner, we hear the truth being shouted before us. Maybe even whispered, not shouted. It's our task, if you'll take it today, to be ready to hear what God has to say. Not, Not just hearing, to hear but to respond. Church, hear me for a second. God does not ask you to come to church just to hear the word. He asks you to come to church to hear the word and then apply. The word without obedience is just an opposition or a challenge or even a hindrance to what I might want. We have an opportunity in front of us but to, to respond to the Word. That's my prayer today, is that when we open the book, not just Proverbs, but any book, I still encourage you today is the 21st day of January. It would be a great day to start reading the book of Proverbs every day, 21, like today, the 21st, 31 chapters in the book. Read it every day. You, you get this. But how do we respond to what God says to us? How do we respond to it? Will you take your Bibles? We're going to look at Proverbs chapter 8. Stand with me as we honor God's Word together. And I know there's 36 verses. We're going to read a bunch of it. And we're going to pull apart. What what does God say to us? Or how does wisdom call out to us? Just listen in. Here we go. Proverbs chapter 8. If you're ready, say amen. Amen. I have an extra two pages of notes today, which means we'll probably be here till 2 o'clock. So if y'all are okay with that, lock the doors. Doug. Are you glad to be here today? Amen. Testimony. And I'm going to read the scripture. Just hold on. I got a text message from a friend of mine just a little bit ago who's not here this morning. His name is Brandon. And Brandon coaches the baseball team at Patrick and Henry Community College. And he asked us to pray for that team. Can I tell you why? Because for three years I've been spending time with Brandon and he didn't want to talk about Jesus. But about two months ago he started asking questions. And it thrills my heart. And he's been here in church, too. And he hadn't been here ever until. And I'm just so excited. Why? Because he's responding, to the word, he's responding to the Word of God. Isn't that awesome? May we be found making disciples of the littles, of the olds, and of everywhere in between. Here we go. Romans, excuse me, Proverbs chapter 8. <clears throat> Listen as wisdom calls out. Here as understanding raises her voice on the hills along the road. She takes her stand at the crossroads by the gates of the entrance to the town. On the road leading in, she cries aloud, I call to you, to all of you. I raise my voice to all people. You simple people use good judgment. 
You foolish people, show some understanding. Listen to me. For I have important things to say to you. Everything I say is right, for I speak the truth and detest every kind of deception. My advice is wholesome. There's nothing devious or crooked in it. My words are plain to anyone with understanding, clear to those with understanding or knowledge. Choose my instruction rather than silver and knowledge rather than pure gold. For wisdom is far more valuable than rubies. Nothing you desire can even compare to it. I, wisdom, live together with good judgment. I know where to discover knowledge and discernment. All fear the Lord will hate evil. Therefore, I hate pride and arrogance, corruption and perverse speech. Common sense and success belong to me. Insight and strength are mine. Because of me, kings reign and rulers make just decrees. Rulers lead with my help and nobles make righteous judgments. I love all who love me. And those who search will surely find me. I have riches and honor, as well as enduring wealth and justice. My gifts are better than gold, even the purest gold. My wages, better than sterling silver. I want to walk in righteousness, or I walk in righteousness, in paths of justice. Those who love me inherit wealth. I will fill their treasuries. The Lord formed me from the beginning before he created anything. Verse 23, I was appointed in ages past at the very first before the earth began. I was born before the oceans were created, before the springs bubbled forth their waters, before the mountains were formed, before the hills. I was born before he, was, he had made the earth and the fields and the first handfuls of soil. I was there when he established the heavens, when he drew the horizon on the oceans. I was there when he set the clouds above, when they established spring, when he established springs deep in the earth. I was there when he set limits to the sea so they would not spread beyond their boundaries, and when he marked off the earth's foundations. I was the architect at his side. I was his constant delight, rejoicing always in his presence, and how happy I was with the world he created, how I rejoiced with the human family. And so my children, listen to me, for all who follow my ways are joyful. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Don't ignore it. Joyful are those who listen to me, watching for me daily at my gates, waiting for me outside my home. For whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But those who miss me injure themselves, and all who hate me love death. Father, we come before you this morning, and I want to thank you, first of all, that you are life. There are most likely some people here in this room or those watching who have never understood what it is to have hope or their sins forgiven. God, I want to pray that, that Jesus, your, your son who you sent for us, would be heard today. God, I pray that you speak. As wisdom calls out to us, I pray that we would listen. And then we'd respond. But to those who have never been saved, I pray that today would be the day that they say, I need Jesus. God, thank you for what's ahead. Most of all, thank you that we're not alone. You're walking with us. And we'll listen today. Lord, we're listening. Lord, I'm listening. Please speak. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. It might be the most profound thing you ever hear. God is love. God loves you. Maybe take that reasoning just a little bit further. God is truth. Would you agree with both those statements? God is love, God is truth. All the while, place those bookends or measuring stick or our motivation is God himself. What is his wisdom? James 3, 17 and 18. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, peace-loving, gentle at all times, willing to yield to others, full of mercy and good and fruit, the fruit of good deeds. <clears throat> it shows no favoritism, always sincere. And those who are peacemakers will plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. So I want to ask you to lean in. To, to, to listen to him. Listen close. 
It's God speaking. When I was 20, 22, I asked this question of a friend. You know those voices that you hear? How do you know which one's God? Let me try to answer that for you today, if you will. You see, when you listen to someone often, you begin to recognize their voice. In fact, John 10, 10, Jesus says, John 10, the whole chapter, he says, my sheep follow me because they know my voice. The reason why we don't know if it's Satan's voice, my voice, or God's voice is often because we haven't been listening to his voice. And I want to challenge you today, listen. The more you listen to him, the more you read his word, the more you spend time in prayer with God, you're going to hear his voice and recognize his voice because his voice is for you. Listen, I, I give you some thoughts here. If it's a lifting voice, it must be from him. If it's a voice of truth that is not pushing you down, but telling you if you make this change, if you accept my forgiveness, do you know who that is? It's God. We have an enemy who's going to steal, kill, and destroy. Amen? Amen. He is always trying to push us down and tell us we're nothing. God is trying to lift us up and tell us we're something. So take his wisdom and apply it. It's his wisdom that will change our life, revolutionize our churches, and even transform our homes and our hearts to be more like Jesus, which is what he's trying to do today and every day to make us more like Jesus. And we've got to work together. So I'm going to give you some thoughts. Where, where we begin is this. Call out to God. This is, this is the first place. Where, where are we? We call out to God. Jeremiah 33, 3. Ask me and I'll show you remarkable things that you don't know anything about. Listen to this. I, ask me and I will show you remarkable secrets that you do not know about things to come. Just ask him. We need his wisdom. You would agree? My life verse is James 1.5. I've been telling you every week this verse, and I, I quote it often. If you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he'll give it to you, for he'll not rebuke you for asking. I, I don't know about you, but there are many times I need wisdom. Anybody else? How I deal with that woman you gave me? Give me wisdom. <laughs> I'm going to get in more trouble, I know. God, how am I going to pay that bill? Some of you just need to go to work because you'll start getting a paycheck and you'll be able to pay your bills. I'm meddling, okay? How are we going to get wisdom? Well, listen to this. If you never listen, you'll never hear. And if you don't stop listening, you'll always hear. Why? Because God is always speaking. But we're not listening. We've got muffs muffled ears we have blinded eyes we have crooked steps why because we've decided to do it our way i'll do it my way as an old song says but we need to call out to god we need to ask him for wisdom we need to get honest about some things second chronicles you've heard this seven fourteen. if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways i will hear from heaven Forgive their sins and heal their land. I don't know about you, but we need that prayer across our nation. Would you agree? Amen. For what happens in the White House, <laughs> we desperately need that prayer. We need that prayer in the State House, whether I agree with our governor or not, which I, I do more now. But you know what? It's my house too. Because the most important house in our land is not that one over there. It's this one right here. Mine, yours. We need to, God, I need your wisdom. God, I come to you humbly today. I, I'm going to turn from my ways to your ways. I, I want to seek your face. Why? Because that turning point, that change, connects me to the one who loves me most. It connects me to God who is going to change, radically change your life and mine. The one who shows up when everybody else is running out. God himself. Turning to God is how we connect with God and he is always asking us or inviting us to spend time with him. By the way, we need to prepare for what's ahead. Mark, or listen, listen to this. Matthew 7, 7 through 8. Listen. Keep on asking. And you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking. And you'll find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open. For whoever asks. Are you all reading? Whoever asks, receives. Whoever seeks, finds. Whoever knocks, 
the door will be open. What are you asking God for? Will, will you join me just, just for a minute? I, I, I wrote some prayer requests. If you did that, will you just come lay them here on the altar? There are some others. Bring your pens too and, and put them up here, and then I'll give you some guidance at the end of the service what to do with those. Come on and bring them up. God is so good, God is so good, God is so good, He's so good to me, I love Him so, I love Him so. I love him so, he's so good to me. Call out to God, and I'll show you things that you've never seen. I, I want to move on just a little bit further in this message, and I'm going to tell you, not only call out to God, but wisdom calls out. I love this scripture, and there's some back in chapter 1 and in chapter 9. It says it over and over again, point number 2 of this sermon. Wisdom calls out. How does wisdom call out? If you'll read through the book of Proverbs, you're going to find many, many times, men, we're warned to stay away from the wrong women. Have you ever read Proverbs before? Okay. Um, let's just be honest. When you get with the wrong people, you'll go the wrong direction. Do you agree? And in the book of Proverbs, often it says, don't go by her house. She has done things. She's going to say things. She's dressed in a provocative way. You know what? Don't go by there. And it says she calls out in the streets. And then right around the corner here in chapter 8, it says that wisdom calls out. Who's calling? There's a lot of people. Who, how do I know who to answer? How do I know who, who to listen to? Anybody ever get those phone calls and it says Spam. I've never met her before, but she's weird. <laughs> Any of y'all like spam? We eat it in Cuba quite a lot, and it's not bad when they know how to prepare it, and it's also not bad when it's all you got. <laughs> spam. Who do we listen to? Hey, I'm on the do not call list. Don't call me back. <laughs> I think some of us have got on the do not call list with God, and we need to get off it. Because we've stopped listening to what he has to say. Praise God, some of us are listening to him. Amen? What, what is God saying to you? Today I want to give you just some, some questions or a series of questions <coughs> that are going to talk about when wisdom calls out, this is what happens. This is what you hear. This is how applying his wisdom or listening to that wisdom is going to radically change your life. But the foundation is this. God is always speaking. Therefore, we need to always be listening. Let me, let me say that again. God is always seeking to tell you and me his story that is becoming our story. His desire is for your good and his glory. Y'all know Romans 8, 28? For God causes all things to work together for his good in your life. Not your good, not your wants, but he knows best. Do you ever ask that question, why? Why? If you've ever had kids, somebody has asked you that question, why? Why, 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 That reminds me of some movie. We're not going to talk about Nemo or anybody else, but why, why, why? But sometimes I feel like that finding the voice of God oftentimes is like finding Nemo. We're looking in all the wrong places, listening to all the wrong people, when God is right here and ready. And we have in front of us, if you will, the best, the brightest, the most excellent, and watch. God confirms his word over and over again. Y'all doing okay? Listen fast, because here we go. <clears throat> I've got some questions for us. First of all, who is speaking? In this scripture, 
Chapter 8, verse number 1, it says wisdom calls out. I want to remind you today that real wisdom, in fact, all wisdom comes from God. But it is Satan, the enemy, who desires to pervert. And that's what he does because all things were created by God. Amen? But not all things are profitable for us. All things are, are made for us. You know, there are some things that we shouldn't, we shouldn't deal with. We should understand why they're there. I'll give you just a little thought. I was... <clears throat> I was in Cuba back in, in early December, and we were hiking, and I've always been told there are no snakes in Cuba. Well, I called them a liar because I saw a snake along the path. But I chose not to pick up that snake. I've been told that there are no snakes, and then I was told if you do see one, they're not poisonous. You know what? I'm not going to tempt him, that snake, or God. I, I remember reading that Paul got bit by a snake, but it didn't do anything to him. That's good for Paul. Ain't mine, okay? I'm not going. I don't like snakes. Anybody else? If you do like snakes, bring it to Cindy Adams. She'll take care of you. <laughs> no, she won't. She'll run the other way. Um, every wisdom comes from every <laughs> from God. Listen to it His way. Because w w when we have that wisdom that is changed or, or just barely changed, look at it this way. You know, if you're going in one direction, if you'll just veer off just one millimeter... In a mile, you'll be off more than a millimeter. It'll be more like a foot. And if you go a couple of miles or 10 miles or 15 miles, you're going to be off and even miss your destination. Do you know what happens when you and I stop listening to God? God is love. I don't want to hear anything else. I come to church. I go to church. I do all that kind of stuff. But here's the deal. When you do not apply what he says to you, you are going to miss the destination he has for you. The destination of success, the destination of a good marriage, the destination of a good job. Why? Because you're going to try to do it your way, and you're going to continue to do it your way, and your way is going to get you. Oh, the scripture says it like this. He says, the mind of man plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Sometimes his plan huh, is so much better because I keep digging a pit and falling in it. More, more Proverbs, right? Wisdom calls out. Wisdom raises her voice. It says in verse 2, wisdom takes a stand. Matthew 5, 1. One day Jesus saw the crowds gathering, and so he went up on the mountainside and he sat down, and his disciples gathered around him. Look around you and listen to what God says, because God is going to use your situation. He's going to use the, the, the scripture that you're in. with deception and sin, one with wisdom and sanctification, one, one with a warped sense of understanding and pleasure, one with a righteous sense of understanding and fulfillment and abundance in life, one with good judgment, one with bad, one with, with understanding. Listen to what it says in verse number six. It says, I have all good things to say to you, and if we'll just listen to God, we'll understand who's calling. Isaiah 30, verse number 21, your own ears will hear him right by Behind you, a voice will say, this is the way to go, whether to the right or to the left. And you know what? If you're listening, God is speaking. So who is speaking? It's wisdom. Number two here, what's being said? In fact, by what's being said, you should know it's God or not God. I, I, I've seen some people or talked to some people who have shown me their Bible before, and they may not have literally done it, but some of them literally did it. They took a black highlighter and began to highlight the things in the Word of God that they wouldn't want to talk about, the things that I don't agree with. Let me tell you what that is. It's wrong. Because the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation is the Word of God. You don't need to understand it. Excuse me. You don't need to say it's right. He said it's right. There was something on my refrigerator. I've told you this before, and it said, it, it said something like this. God said it. I believe it. That settles it. Just remove the middle part. God said it. That settled it a long time ago. We need to believe him, listen to him. So what is being said? It is verse number 7. It's what's right and true. And it says that he hates deception. Why? Because it's right and true. In verse number 8, he said it is wholesome. So what are we hearing? 
Matthew 10, 27. What I tell you in, in the what I tell you now in the darkness, shout abroad when daybreak comes. What I whisper you in your ear, shout it from the housetops for all to hear. Let me just give you some thoughts on this one. When God gives you a word, oftentimes that word is not just for you. I'll put some feet to it. Do we have any folks in here that store up things for rainy days? I'll need that one day. I'm what you call a hoarder of things at times. And I'll go looking for something and I'll realize, boy, I, I saved that 10 years ago and I haven't even used it. <laughs> have you ever done that before? It just seems like I, everything's for me, 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 me. When in fact everything that God's given us is for others, others, others. That, that money, that paycheck that God has given you, it's not just for you. It's for you to take care of your family and to care for others. That, that, that wisdom that God has given you, it's not just for you. There is somebody who needs to hear you say, I heard God say. We have an opportunity. So who is it speaking? It's wisdom. What is he saying? He is telling us things that will revolutionize, change our lives. Acts 20, 20. I never shrank back from telling you what I needed to hear, what you needed to hear, either publicly or in your homes. That's what Paul said. And we're not Paul, but you know what? We ought to be like Paul. Who is speaking? What is he saying? How about this? How do we classify what, what we're hearing? Let me just give you some thoughts. First of all, it's valuable. What, what God gives us is, va what's the most valuable thing you own? Don't answer out loud. What's the most valuable thing you own? For some, will tell me, it's your phone. Anybody want to get honest today? Do you spend more time with your phone than you do your wife? <laughs> Julie, shut up. Because <laughs> I hear it all the time, and, and I'm convicted, aren't you? What, what is it that we value? Some of us have safety deposit boxes. What, what's in there? I remember my dad, years ago, he had lined across his dresser these, these coins. And I was like, that's cool, that's fine. I had no idea of the value of some of those coins. And now the, mo many of those coins are our sons. Ryan has them. I don't know where they are. But what's valuable? Illustration. That wedding ring that cost all that money speaks the same volume as that rubber wedding ring that you might wear because they're... Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? has the same understanding. But the wisdom that God tells us, classify it, it's valuable. This is something you need to listen. It's more valuable, the scripture says here, than diamonds, than rubies. Those most precious things... Why? Because the most pre nothing compares to his wisdom. The most precious thing in the world is what God says. Psalms 19.10, they are more valuable or desirable than gold, even the finest gold. They are sweeter than honey, even the honey that's dripping from the comb. Why? Because when his judgment speaks, it's valuable. It's partnered with good judgment. It is discerning. Philippians 1.9, I pray that your love will overflow more and more and that you will know all or keep on growing in knowledge and understanding. How do we do that? By what you value, by what you hold on to, it's going to help you grow to be more and more wise or like Jesus. It's that athlete who continues to practice and practice and practice. Why do you practice? Because practice makes perfect, that old saying. Listen to this. The best and those who are going to win the games are those who are practicing their art or their sport or whatever it is so they can get stronger and stronger. Why is it that we Christians ought to have a quiet time? We ought to spend time with Jesus because it's our practice because we're preparing for eternity, right? Come on now. We're also practicing for who I'm going to come in contact with today. You know, one of the reasons why we ought to have a savings account is because something bad's going to happen, and I'm going to need some money to be able to take care of the bad thing that happened. And if I've dealt with it beforehand, it's dealt with it after. But if I don't deal with it before, in other words, God teach me so I'll know where to go. Instead of, oh, crap, I don't know what to do. Let me go to God. Go beforehand. 
Fearing of the Lord, fearing God opens it up. And listen to this. It removes wrong and evil from our lives. It is the opposite of pride and arrogance. Why? Because God's word is true. God's word is wise. God's word is the wisdom of God to us. Psalms 111, verse number 10. The fear of the Lord is the foundation of true wisdom, and all who obey his commands will grow in wisdom. So praise him forever. In fact, common sense and success, verse number 14 says, comes when you listen to the wisdom of God. It brings insight and strength all from his wisdom. So who is speaking? How do we understand it? Or what is it about? Here's another question for you. What are the results of real wisdom in my life? Did you know and do you believe? I heard the new speaker of the house answer a question. And and if y'all haven't heard him, you probably should go listen to him because he's a Jesus guy. And he quotes the Bible. And somebody asked him, do you believe that it was God's will that this president be elected? That's a hard question because I don't always agree with President Biden. I'm sorry. I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I am a Jesus guy. But I don't like people who go against God's word. Here's what I believe the scripture says. All who are in authority have been placed there by God. Do you know why I believe that? Because Romans says it. The Bible says it. Do I understand why God puts people in authority sometimes? Because there's some of them that I don't think they ought to be there. If we were God, we'd do things differently. Amen? We'd be in a world of hurt if you were God. (laughs) You'd be in a world of hurt if I were God. Because some of you... Oh, let's leave that alone for another day. (laughs) The results of his truth, his wisdom is this. Authorities rule because he says so. Listen, keep on. Kings rule because he put them in place. Rulers lead and lead because he put them in place. Judges judge because he allows them to be in place. And why? Because he works all things. He is continually guiding us, leading us. Whether we understand it or not, this journey has been patterned by the King of kings and Lord of lords who has our best interest at his heart. You believe it or not? In fact, we need to search for it. Verse number 17, he tells us this over and over again. I love those who love me. Those who search will surely find me. Jeremiah 29, verse number 13. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. You ever played hide and seek before? Sometimes I'd like to play hide and seek and go take a nap. You go do, okay, we'll talk about that another day. Do you know what happens when we listen to the Word of God and apply the Word of God or the wisdom of God? It leads us to walking in righteousness. It brings an inheritance sometimes of wealth. Maybe that's money. Maybe that's a wealth of wisdom. Why? Because we understand what is going on. I love the picture here in verse number 30 and around verse number 30 of who this wisdom is. You see, back in verse number 1, it says, Wisdom shouts in the streets. She calls out. She stands up on the road. And she is speaking to us. Who is this wisdom that's speaking to us? Let me give you some thoughts of who this is. This wisdom is the architect of creation who is sitting by or standing by the side of the Creator Himself and said it's good and continues today to speak His words. Jesus said it something like this. The words that I say and the actions that I take or only because the Father said to do this or the Father said to say this. Shouldn't that be our same way? He was the architect of creation. He was the friend at his side. He was enjoying his presence. He was happy with all that was created. He was blessed with all of humanity. Why? Because he was the one that was there and understood who God is. Psalms 37, 7 says it this, this way. Be still in the presence of the Lord. Wait patiently for him to act. Don't worry about evil people who prosper or fret about their wicked schemes. Why? Because we understand who God is. Why do the wicked people, why do those bad people always win? You know what? I don't have all the answers, but I know this. God's still in control. Why do bad things happen to good people? I don't know why some things happen. But I know this. I know who's who's in charge. The last question I want to ask you is this. What do we do with what we hear? When, When you hear from God... Far too often, we're taking the scale and saying, is that good for me or is that bad for me? Does it work for me? Let me tell you what happens oftentimes. You and I are so dead set on our pleasure or our thoughts rather than God's pleasure and God's thoughts that we choose to do it our way. 
And then we come back a little bit later and realize our way didn't get us exactly what we wanted. Or it did for a minute. <laughs> or 10. Or 15 seconds. So you take that however you want to. Doing it God's way may end up in you being blessed in ways that you never thought you could be blessed. Boy, I've got some stories that I can't tell you today. In verse number 32, this is one that you parents, we may need to say to others. And so, my children, listen to me. <laughs> some of y'all want to say that to your kids. Don't, look, don't do it now. <laughs> listen to me. Why don't you listen to me? Do you have this testimony? When I was 16, 17, 18, I was kind of questioning with my daddy, a very smart man, because there were some things that I didn't agree with. But when I turned 20 and 21, I was away from home, and I'd call and we'd talk. I'm thinking, man, that man is smart. He's getting smarter all the time. You and I have an opportunity with wise people around us. Surround yourself with people who walk with Jesus, with people who are smarter than you. Do you know what the best, most successful businessmen have done? Business, most successful business women have done? They have put around them people that are smarter than them. Why? Because I can always learn. It is always time to learn and grow. What do we need to do when we hear from God? I praise God that we're his kids. John 1.12 says it this way. But all who have received him or accepted him, he gave them the right to become the sons of God. I am a child of God. Do you want to say that out loud with me? I am a child of God. In fact, you might want to look at people that are trying to do you ugly, bad things, and tell them, I'm a child of God, and he's coming after you. <laughs> Why? Because God takes care of his kids. We need to understand, listen to him, understand him. What is the outcome <clears throat> what is the outcome of listening to God? It says here in this scripture, beginning in verse number 30 and beyond, it says, the people who listen to him will have joy. In fact, they'll be fueled by, they'll be filled with joy. In fact, I don't know about you, but I'd rather have more joy than pain in my life. How about you? I'd I like to have more joy. You know what's going to happen? The more I listen to, to wisdom, the more joy I'm going to have. Let me put some feet to that. The more you listen to your pa parents, probably the less and less you'll be in trouble. The more you do what's right, like pay your bills, the less and less you'll be behind. Do you know what that is? It's called wisdom. The outcome is joy, inner peace, and even more. In fact, if you listen, verse number 33, you'll become wiser and wiser. Don't ignore him. Why? Because you'll be wiser and wiser if we'll just listen to, what are we going to do with the wisdom of God? What are we going to do with what he says? 1 John 5, 20. And we know that the Son of God has come, and he has given us understanding so that we can know that the true God, and we now live in fellowship with this true God because we live in fellowship with His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the only true God. He is eternal life. Do you know how we know wisdom? We know wisdom because wisdom has a name, and His name is Jesus. Verse number 34, watch for Him at the gates. Watch for Him at the gates. When I was a young child, we would go visit my, my uncle, his name was Don. Don was a lieutenant colonel in the United States Air Force, and he was a, a pilot, an instructor of pilots in uh, Wichita Falls, Texas. And he was one of my favorite men in all the world. I had no idea that he had a drug abuse and an alcohol abuse problem. But I want to tell you, every time I was around my uncle, it was like I was with God because I loved being around him. Let me ask you, who do you love being around? Who, who is it that lights your fire? Who is it that fills you with joy? It ought to be the people that keep filling you up and not those people that keep tearing you down and emptying you out. You understand? That's God. His wisdom says, wait at the gates. Listen for him. Wait for him. Verse number 35, receive life. Whoever comes to me will find me, but find life, not death. But favor in life, again in 1 John chapter 5, verse number 11, it says this, and this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. We find life in the Son of God, in the wisdom of God. I know this. We're going to miss it if we don't listen. Today I challenge you. 
And this is my challenge or our challenge. Psalm 73, verse number 26. My health may fail. My spirit might grow weak. But God will remain my strength. He is mine forever. So God, I want to hear your voice. God, I need your wisdom. And remember what I said earlier? If we'll cry out to him, he'll show us things we don't know. If we'll turn from our ways into his, he'll forgive our sins and heal our land. God, I need your wisdom because my way just doesn't seem to be working like it should have. Why? Because he's God and he's got some stuff for you. Father God, I come before you today and I thank you, we thank you, that you are the Lord, that you are the Savior, that you're the friend. God, our desire today is to listen to you, to hear you, to be changed by you. But God, that's hard. But I need you. Not just at the end of my rope, not just when I'm at the bottom, but God, I need you every day. Thank you that you're our Savior. But God, again, I pray that those who are in here today that have never been saved, that today they would make a, de a de declaration that says, I want to know Jesus because I need him. For those of us who are, who are believers, we're kids, the kids of God, sons and daughters of God, Father, I need your wisdom because I'm struggling. God, I don't know how to make my marriage work or God, my, my job, those people, those kids. God, these bills. Father, those neighbors. Lord, my stress. Those thoughts I've been having. God, I need your wisdom. I just encourage you to keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed for just a minute. And I just want to declare out loud what I need. And maybe you should do the same. God, I know you're speaking. But I confess that I'm not always listening. Help me to listen. <clears throat> I want your wisdom above everything else. God, I, I, I need to hear from you today. And tomorrow. God, please change me. I need you, Jesus. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. Will you stand with me? <clears throat> we have this time of invitation at the end of every one of our services. And if today you need to ask Jesus to be your Savior, I'm going to be down here at the front. We've got some other folks who would love to help you as well. But if you want someone to pray with you, there's an...